Welcome to this beautiful Godswick Chapel. This is such an old chapel in central New South Wales near Armidale. Today I'm going to show you how to photograph this chapel because the only good time of the day is early morning, late afternoon. But I'm going to give you some handy hints to get images like this right the first time. So this is my first point of view. I'm also recording on my phone so you can see what my view looks like. So I'm using my Nikon Z6 II. I'm using the Tekina 17-35 to f4 fx lens. I'm not really that high. This is normally the height that I like. I have this rock wall here in front of me. So to get the best views I might need to lift my tripod up and this is why I like this new Artis tripod because it gets me much higher. But let's see how we do from this point of view here. Why have I chosen this for my first photo? Very simple. It is a very striking pose. We have the rock wall coming in here on an angle right in front of us. We have the gate here, the chapel is on an angle. I don't like photographing head on to a subject. Sometimes you have to, but at times, if you're just on an angle like this, you're seeing a bit of the side as well, it gives you like a three-dimensional view. And that's what you want. You want people to actually see more than one dimension. When you take a photo, think about that. Think about how we view the world. ISO 100. I'm on a tripod. No need to go any higher than ISO 100. I'm at F11 here. Do I really need F11? A lot of times people say like, you know, we just go. We're shooting landscapes. Just go F11 straight away. Well, sometimes we don't need to. It's getting a bit late in the afternoon. Why should I go to f11 when I don't need it? Remember, ultra-wide lenses, even at like at f5.6, we've got huge amount of depth of field. So I'm going to come down to f8. That's all I need. We can see we've got some harsh shadows here. I'm going to take the first photo here. I can see I've blown out the highlights, but there's shade everywhere. The sun is really shining out. You might say, well, you've come at the wrong time of the day. I'm on holidays. You might be too. You might be able to say, okay, well, I'm just going to choose the time of the day when it's best. Here, you've only got one time of the day where you could shoot without this harsh sunlight. That's midday. The sun's shining straight above you. This is the worst time because shadows are harsh. I could have come very in the morning. Let's say around 6.30 in the morning, just as the sun comes up so I don't have this light or have to wait the sun down. But by that time of the day, I'm going long exposures and all that beautiful color will be gone. I'm going to make do with what I have. This looks pretty nice, but I can see like I've got a lot of foreground here. Do I need all that foreground? No. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to raise my tripod. This is how high the camera is now. And I've got a totally different view. Now take another photo. F8, 1 20th of a second. So this photo here is quite wide. I wanted the whole fence. I'm going to have to crop in a bit at the top, a bit at the bottom, but I like this feel. I can see I've got harsh shadows. Lightroom will be able to get rid of those shadows. I just didn't want to blow my highlights out. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see more of this chapel. This looks much better. I can see now I've got that rock wall like this. Now because I'm on aperture priority, I'm just going to dial down 0.7 negative exposure compensation and we'll take a photo. I'll zoom out. So this time it's the same as the first one. Beautiful Ripper Rooney. I'm happy with this. Now let's quickly move and take one head on. Look at the video now. We're head on. Can you see the difference? Now I've taken some photos here. Unbeknown to me, my ZV-1 shut down. I still have nightmares with this camera. The batteries just shut down unexplainedly. Now let's move to the left-hand side here and take a photo the other way. Three dimension facing the other way. I've moved this side so I started one on the right in the middle and then this side here. This one here although it's blocking the chapel I feel like that tree here we can add some dynamic into this photo just not having just a chapel. You say like did you see that big tree there? Wow it looks so nice. We're going to frame so that we've got the tree here and this time I'm shooting quite wide. I think I'm around 20 mils. 
You can see I've tilted the camera a bit. In post-processing, I'm going to have to fix the tilt and then I'm gonna cut the image out. So I'd rather shoot a little bit wider, then in post-processing, I can correct the tilt because I can see there's just a little bit of tilt in the image because I've tilted the camera up. In post-processing, all that will be gone. Let's take a photo. This looks really nice. Shadows are much easier to bring up than highlights. Highlights, if you blind them, pff, that's it. I might never come back here. Shoot as much as you want. When you get home, if you don't need the photo, it doesn't matter. You've recorded it. It's 5.30, the sun's just about set over the horizon. I'll quickly come back into the middle here. I'll quickly take a pano. I'd really like a pano of this one. So I've quickly set up the camera. I'm shooting much wider, but that's all right. 24 megapixels. I'm just gonna make sure that everything is level. Now let's just swing it around. That is very good. Let's give it a little bit more width. I am happy about that. So I've got to do a HDR here. Just wait till you see these clouds. The sun's just bathing these clouds. They're just pink. This will look beautiful. Let's start way over here. Now, when you shoot a panorama, always make sure you're shooting extra frames either side. You don't want to end up with going, oh, I've just cut the edge. I want this tree here. So I'm going to make sure I come at least one full frame over to make sure that I don't cut anything out. Let's go. That's it. Move it around. I think this could be the money shot. This looks so nice. Panoramas are normally 16 by 9, like you see video. Where this one ends up 16 by 9? Let's see. thanks for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, leave it in the comment box below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.